This video is going to pick up right where the other one left off, but we are moving on to a different file. So I'm going to go up to my little folder icon right up here. I'm going to go up a folder, and then I'm going to go to part 03 underscore matrices underscore 2. Double click on that. Click select folder. All right, and then over here in the current folder view, I want to open up part 025 matrices and plotting. So double click on that. Great, now that's opened up. I'm going to have five different videos that use this same content, the same file. So the first one is going to be loading data in from file and sorting it to get different information out. Uh, the second one is also going to be reading information from file and perhaps also adding in some graphing on that. We're going to get into a plotting section, how to do some basic graphing in MATLAB. And then next, special matrix functions. And this is going to be like generating new matrices with some built-in MATLAB functions, followed by, uh, a, I don't know how quick it's going to be, but at least some review right here. Anyway, this first video is just going to be the name popularity data. So I'm going to run this section, control enter, scroll on down. The code here that's reading data in from file is not going to work in Octave, so I'll have to figure out an alternative to that, but you'll see that in an upcoming video. All right, so in this first example, I'm going to read in most popular baby boy names 1980 to 2013.csv. This file will also be linked in the video description. It's, avail it's available through my Google Drive. I'm going to open up that Google Drive and show you this document. All right, so I'm in the folder right here that you can access. You can download all of this stuff. It's linked in the description. I'm going to go to part 03, open that up. And then here's the CSV file right here. I'm going to double click on it. All right, let's zoom in just a little bit, see this a little bit easier. All right, we've got four columns, the name rank, the year, the name itself, and the frequency. I don't remember the units of the frequency, but uh, more is more popular. Of course, a lower rank is more popular. So the number one rank is Michael in the year 1980. And it goes up to uh, rank 25 right here, and then goes on to the next year, so 1981, and so on, all the way down to uh, 2013 here at the bottom. All right, back to MATLAB. Now, in my current folder view, I actually see that CSV file right there. So I am in the folder that I need to be in in order to read the data in from file. I'm going to use read table because there is some text data as well as numeric data. So we're going to read this into a table type variable, and then we're going to operate on it from there. I'm going to use the sort rows function and give it my data that was read in. And I'm going to ask it to sort first by column three, followed by column one, both of those ascending. Now ascending is the default uh, sorting order as opposed to descending. So I don't actually need to do that, but I felt like including it for completeness. Oh, and I should have said, my goal is to see which boy names are increasing in popularity and which are decreasing. So my plan is to sort by name, uh, the third column, followed by rank, the first column. And then just look at the years to see if the popularity seems to be increasing over time or decreasing over time. There are probably better ways to do this, like with a graph, which will also be shown in this video. But first we're going to use sort rows here. Control Enter. It is a little slow to read in from file. I did not speed that up just to show you how long it took to read in. All right, here's a summary of our data but I'd like to actually see everything. So I'm gonna click display all 850 rows. All right, so at the bottom here, we have uh, Zachary, and then b above that, the other names. So we were sorting by names. So we got Z at the bottom here. And it looks like Zachary was most popular in 1993 because we were then further sorting by column one. From there, the ranking goes up, which is a decrease in popularity. Uh, and we see that the years continue forward from 1993. So it looks like Zachary has been decreasing in popularity over time, uh, except for a little bit of an increase toward the end in the early 2000s. Let's ask a different question about this data. Suppose I want to see the top ranked names, most recent first. So in other words, I want to sort by rank and then by year. So what I can say is sort rows on my data, and I first want to sort by rank and then by year. Now I already forget what columns those are, so I just go and check. So rank was the uh, first column, and then year was the second. So sort first by rank, and then by year. And now it's already defaulted to ascending, but I could add in ascend and ascend. All right, so let's go all the way to the top here and check out our top ranked names. So um, boy names are unfortunately uh, really repetitive. Uh, so Michael is the top ranked name for like just tons of these years. Uh, so that's definitely by far the top one with uh, not even that close of a second with Jacob because then there's Michael again and then there's a little bit more Jacobs and so on. 
Suppose I want to see a list of only the rank one names. Now it gets a little bit weird in here. So one of the things that I need to do is I need to find the positions or indexes of the rows that have a rank matching one. And the weird part is the use of the curly brackets here, not the parentheses. Matrices are going to use parentheses for indexing, but table type data will sometimes use curly brackets. And I used read table to read this information in because it contained mixed types, both numeric and text data. And so here I'm indexing into data, give me all the rows, just column one, and where that matches the value of one, because column one is the rankings, right? So where are the rankings of one? And then copy that data into this vector over here. But I'm indexing using curly brackets, not parentheses. Now this right here is a somewhat equivalent way to do it, but it's slower and so MATLAB will suggest that you don't do that. It's not exactly equivalent because positions here is actually a logical array. So if I printed out positions, it would be all ones and zeros. I didn't mean to imply that it was full of indexes. This right here would be a different vector. This would contain all the numbers of the positions where the values in the first column match one, whereas this contains ones and zeros. Where is it true? that there is a match between one and the value in column one. All right, scrolling down from there, I'm just gonna index right back into my data table. I'm gonna say in the rows corresponding to positions or in the rows where positions is true and in column three. Just get me the names, get me those values out of column three and let's display it out here. All right, and here they are. So again, it's you know a bunch of copies of Michael because it's frequently the most popular followed by some of the other names towards the bottom. Hasn't been sorted, obviously the duplicates are still in it, but we're just displaying them out for this example. All right, let's dig in a little bit deeper for a more interesting question. How has the popularity of Zachary changed over time? Now this is pretty much what I just answered at the very beginning of the video with just the sorting, but let's dig into the data and display it out in a more readable format. Now, one of the first things I need to do is figure out where are all the rows that contain the information that I want. And you might think that you could just do it like I'm showing on line 65 here. You could actually just say, oh, from the data, all rows, column three, that's the column that contains the names, where are those names equivalent to the name Zachary? But that doesn't actually work. You can't just use the double equal sign. Instead, what we need to use is this string compare function. This is an abbreviation of string compare. A lot of the functions in MATLAB are really aggressively abbreviated, which I don't necessarily agree with, but it's what we're working with. So this will also return trues and falses, but it will compare text data, also known as strings. And it will get me the positions where Zachary is located, the rows, the row indexes where Zachary is located. And then I index back into my data and I say these rows, all the columns, and I copy that information into my Zach data over here. And then I am going to sort by column two, display it out, and then I'm gonna make a graph. I'm gonna show our first plot here. I'm gonna talk about that code more in a second. One thing I need to note is, note the use of parentheses here. Wasn't I just using and just saying that I needed to use curly brackets? I was, but here you can't, you, you, it literally doesn't work. So here the code runs, great, there's my graph popped up. Fantastic, we'll talk more about that in a second. But if I actually put in the curly brackets right here, it, it doesn't work because it's the wrong type. So that can be very confusing because we just used it for indexing here, but you don't actually use it right here. I had to investigate this when I was first writing this code and Google it and finally come upon the, the problem that I was running into and realized that I needed the parentheses. Most of our data, and all of our data that uses regular old matrices is gonna use parentheses for the indexing. And here we use the parentheses as well, but not always for table type data. All right, continuing on down. That graph that popped up briefly, and I'll show it again here. So I grab from uh, my Zach data, so only the data that uh, contains Zach information and is sorted by column two, which is the year. Let's copy out all the rows, column one, those are our ranks, and all the rows, column two, those are our years, and plot them. Plot function is really basic in MATLAB, it's super easy. You have a vector of what you want your x values to be, you have a vector of the same length for what your y values are gonna be. You put it inside plot and it pops up the plot. 
We got X label, Y label, and title. And inside of quotation marks, single quotes, the apostrophes, we can label our axes and put a title on the graph. There it is right there. So we got our years on the X axis and it's labeled, ranks on the Y axis and it's labeled. Now, one thing that always confuses me about this is I always forget that like low rank is actually highest popularity. So this is the highest popularity right here. If we wanted to fix that, how could we do it? How could we basically invert this graph? Well, since the rankings only go to 25, what we could do is this line of code right here. I'll just copy and paste it up here. It does need to go before the plotting, but after the rank calculation. And we just take all our ranks and set them equal to the absolute value of 25 minus the ranks. So this will basically invert them because a low rank will become a high rank. So one will become 24 and 25 will actually become zero. So if I run it again, when I'm running this code, the graph is actually not popping up because I've already run it. Like it's behind the scenes. Like if I hover down here, like there it is and it has updated. That's not really ideal. Um, that's why I like to put a close all in my code uh, if I'm trying to regenerate a graph, because if you close it and then regenerate a graph, it will come to the forefront. It will be the front window. So if I run this again, there it is, pops right up. Highest rank was still in 1993, but now it's actually the highest value. And we can see sort of the popularity of Zachary over time. And that's all for this video.